today on Flavors and Knowledge, Mastering Asparagus. Welcome back, dear friends. This is Chef Walter with another episode of your favorite podcast, Flavors and Knowledge. Today I'd like to talk to you about the care, the cooking, and creativity of asparagus. Spring is here. Asparagus are abundant. Let's find out how to buy them and what are some of the tricks and suggestions that you can probably use. And would it send the spears and a delicate flavor? Asparagus is a quintessential ingredient and marks the arrival of spring. Home cooks and chefs love its versatility and the nutritional benefits. However, to truly elevate this vegetable to its full potential, one must understand the nuance of its care, the cooking methods, and the potential pitfall. In this brief and comprehensive guide, I'd like to explore the best practices for handling it, and see if we can be of any help. I want to start with the shopping for asparagus. So when you buy asparagus, there are several key factors that you ought to consider to ensure you select the freshest and the highest quality spares. First on the list is its color. Always look for bright green spares with minimal browning or discoloration. The tips should always be tightly closed and compact without any signs of wilting or drying out. Number two, texture. Choose asparagus with firm, smooth stalks. Avoid spears that feel limp, rubbery, or even mushy, as they are likely past their prime and will lack the desired texture when you cook them. Third, thickness. Asparagus spears come in varying thicknesses ranging from thin to thick. While thin and thick spears can be delicious, thinner spears tend to be more tender and they cook quickly. While the thicker spears may have a little bit more robust flavor and slightly longer cooking time. Always select based on your preference and your intended use. Fourth on the list, uniformity. Look for bundles of asparagus that are relatively uniform in size and shape. This ensures even cooking and presentation when preparing dishes that require uniformity, such as salads or stir fries. Five on the list, tight tips. Crucial to verify that the asparagus tips are firmly closed and compact. Avoid uh, spares with open or flowering tips as this may indicate that the asparagus has passed and it begins to deteriorate. Number six, freshness. Trust your senses. Fresh asparagus should have a clean, grassy aroma. If the spears have a strong or unpleasant odor, it's a sign that they are no longer fresh and may be starting to spoil. You're probably asking how to care for asparagus. Let's start with selection. When selecting the asparagus, again, as we mentioned above, look for firm, bright green stalks with tightly closed tips. Avoid any spears that are looking to be shriveled. Storage. To maintain freshness, trim the woodsy end of the asparagus and place them upright in a jar or glass with about an inch of water. Taking the proper steps, to keep your asparagus fresh and crisp is essential. Before storing trimmed asparagus tips in the refrigerator, cover them with a damp paper towel. This ensures that the tips will stay moist and it will not dry out, preventing it from getting moldy as well. Then there is the preparation aspect. To remove dirt or debris before cooking, Rinse the asparagus in cold water. Trim the tough ends by snapping them off or using a knife to cut them where they are naturally bent and they become tender. As far as the cooking methods, 
I have several ones that I use, and you probably already do. One of them is steaming. Asparagus can be steamed for four to six minutes, depending on their size, until crisp, and it will preserve the delicate flavor and its vibrant color. Place the spares in a steamed basket over boiling salted water. Then we have the grilling method. Grilling adds a smoky char and depth of flavor to asparagus. Toss the fresh asparagus in extra virgin olive oil, little sea salt, and black pepper, and grill over medium to high heat for three to four minutes per side, until charred and tender. Then we have the roasting method. A well-executed roasting brings out the natural sweetness of asparagus, while creating caramelized edges. Arrange the spears on a baking sheet, drizzle with good quality olive oil, Adjust the seasoning with sea salt and pepper and gently roast in a well preheated oven, usually at 425 Fahrenheit, for about 10 to 12 minutes or until you feel they are tender and slightly browned. Then we have the sauteing method. Sauteing quickly cooks asparagus, imparting a golden hue and savor flavor. Extra virgin olive oil or unsalted butter in a wide skillet over low to medium heat add the asparagus pears and cook for five to seven minutes tossing them occasionally until they are tender and slightly browned and with some of these asparagus you can sure come up with some great ideas but i'll share with you some of them a nice asparagus risotto a beautiful asparagus salad blanched perhaps with parmigiano cherry tomatoes and a tangy vinaigrette. There is also asparagus pesto, which you can add with a little basil, sliced garlic, toasted pine nuts, and again, parmigiano cheese and olive oil. A beautiful asparagus tart. You can arrange blanched asparagus pears on puff pastry. Then you top them with ricotta cheese, lemon zest, and fresh thyme, and bake until golden brown for really an elegant tart. Oh, I didn't mean to forget the asparagus soup. Pureed cooked asparagus with onion, garlic, vegetable broth, and a touch of cream will make a smooth, perfect for a chilly evening soup. Some suggestions on what not to do. First on the list, it's overcooking. Avoid overcooking asparagus. They can become mushy and lose its vibrant color and crisp texture. Don't forget the season. Asparagus benefits from seasoning, so don't be shy with salt and pepper and other flavor enhancers like garlic, lemon zest, or parmigiano. Number three, crowding the pan. Always avoid overcrowding the pan when sauteing or roasting asparagus, as this can lead to steaming rather than caramelization. Then, using old asparagus. Freshen is essential, as we said, when it comes to the asparagus. So avoid using spears that are limp, woodsy, or even have started to develop an unpleasant odor. There is a loss of nutritional value. As you know, asparagus is a nutrient-rich vegetable with essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. However, improper cooking methods or prolonged storage can lead to a loss of nutritional value. Overcooking, in particular, can cause the breakdown of vitamins such as C, and folate, and to preserve the nutritional integrity of asparagus, always opt for quick cooking methods like steaming or sautéing, and consume it soon after the purchase time, so that you can have the freshest taste and the maximum nutritional benefits. My final thought, ladies and gentlemen, mastering the art of cooking asparagus involves careful selection, proper handling, and creative cooking techniques. By following these simple tips and exploring some inventive recipes, you'll be able to enjoy the delicate flavor and the nutritional benefits of asparagus to its fullest. So, embrace this versatile vegetable and let your culinary imagination soar with endless possibility. The best time, as you know, is now, in the spring. And that does it for another episode on Flavors and Knowledge. Regarding the asparagus and how to treat them, would I give you some suggestion, some uh, 
uh, tips and uh, perhaps some creativity ideas. But I'm sure you have plenty more of those. I'll share with you on the next round. In the meantime, stay well. And if you're in the kitchen today on tonight, cook an asparagus. Keep your eyes away from the fire. Stay well. Ciao, ciao. Flavors and Knowledge is brought to you by Chef Welch's Cooking School in Cranston, Rhode Island. For classes, workshops, events, and programs, please visit our website at chefwalterscookingschool.com. For all other services offered by Chef Walter's Food Group, check out our main website, chefwalter.com.